Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch and welcome back to my kitchen. I am very happy to have you here with us today. Today we are doing something in our kitchen that we have not done in probably 10 years and that is to make a whole bunch of freezer meals. Dan and I have become increasingly busy over the last couple of months. Dan is now working from home. I am also working from home here with you guys on YouTube. And we were just talking about it last night and decided that it would be really beneficial for us to have at least a freezer meal every week that we would be able to pull out of the freezer and pop in the oven for those days when we are extra busy. Today is going to be the first of many of these kinds of cooking days, I'm sure. What we're going to be baking today is a whole bunch of lasagna. We are going to do chicken enchiladas and baked beans, all meals that our family absolutely loves. Dan is here with me today in the kitchen, helping me do a whole bunch of the prep work and putting everything together. And he has graciously offered to chop all the onions for me. My eyes are actually burning all the way from over here, but he wears contact lenses and so they don't bother him at all. Let me show you all of the ingredients that I have put together here for what we're gonna make today. For the lasagnas that we're going to make, I'm making a huge batch or two huge batches actually of sauce and there may be enough left over that I'll be able to freeze that for spaghetti. But in there, we're going to be putting this tomato paste, all of these sauces that you can see right here, the herbs and spices here we're going to have oregano and basil and parsley some cloves which is the secret secret ingredient for this sauce salt and pepper paprika we are also going to be throwing in some celery this is celery that we froze from our garden along with some peppers on the cook stove this morning i have already fried up six pounds of ground beef and I probably need to get my stove loaded again. I got so many fantastic tips from you guys when I shared my cooking waffles on the wood cook stove the other day, people that have more experience with cooking on wood cook stoves than we do about them. And one of them was to use smaller pieces of wood for more consistent and controllable heat, which I think is a fantastic idea. I can tell right away that that would work really well. Sadly, we don't have any at the moment, but we are going to get some chopped up. So right now I'm stuck with our bigger pieces, but I did get this stove going so hot this morning that it was able to fry up the ground beef really quickly. So the plan right now is I'm going to take all those ingredients from over there and come dump them in these pots and then let these cook down so they can thicken. And we'll use that for the sauce for the lasagna. We have a ton of onion chopping going on and I think I might have grossly overestimated the amount of onions that we need. So let's do this amount for one batch and then do maybe that many for the next batch. Hey, do we need some for the baked beans though, right? Or we can throw some. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it does take them. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we do have the right amount then because we'll use these ones in the baked beans. These ones for one batch of sauce and these for the other batch. Oh my gosh, my eyes are burning. Holy cow. Whoa, those are so hot. That's good. Yeah, we'll just throw one of those. One, all of yeah, all of them right in there. We'll make it a super loaded sauce yes please okay I will throw in our sauce I have to admit when I pulled 20 jars out of the pantry today to make all of these recipes it was a little bit painful but Dan had a good point and he said that it's just going out of one kind of food storage into another kind of food storage and we're still obviously eating it I just don't think I've ever done 20 jars at once before so we're putting four jars of tomato sauce i won't be able to link this recipe in the uh, show notes today because we are still fine tuning this one but i will be able to do the chicken enchiladas and the baked beans measure measure <laughs> measuring is yeah we're talking to the wrong person if we're talking about measuring Dan's just teasing me about my lack of measuring he's definitely much more of a measure and follow a recipe cook whereas I am definitely more of a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that kind of cook this baked bean recipe that we're going to make today is actually one that he makes for us. As we go. Okay. 
Sounds good. For this sauce, I roasted up some Georgia candy roaster squash this morning. And we're going to plunk one half in one. And that is gonna get too hot sitting there, so let's put that up here. I think I might have over roasted these a little bit. Georgia Candy Roaster is another one of my favorite squashes. It's a little bit more watery than the squash that I was showing you the other day, the Burgess Buttercup squash, but the flavor of it is fantastic. It's really good. My mom taught me the secret of adding squash to uh, sauce and we absolutely love it. It's so good. Really good. Really good, yeah. Is that the same squash you used the other day? No, this is a different squash um, because I wanted to save the Burgess Buttercup just to eat. <laughs> it was so good. I know, it tasted like, um, like just a uh, Pumpkin pie almost. Actually, it's out of bowl of it after my salad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like for real, like with nothing on it. I actually had some the other day with whipping cream. <laughs> and it was so good. Tasted just like a, a pumpkin pie. <laughs> Woo, that's hot. On our pantry tour, a couple people asked us if we end up with a lot of waste or if we end up with food expiring or going bad. And actually we don't. We really do try to turn our pantry over every 12 months so there's not a lot of waste that happens. And anything that does go bad, which is very little, or um, things like this, like the peels uh, off of the fruits and vegetables and cores and things like that, those all go out to our pigs and our chickens. So we really do not have a lot of waste. So I bought myself this garlic press the other day because I thought, I used to have one many, many years ago, and I thought maybe I would like it again. But I have to be honest, I actually find it more efficient for the amount of garlic that I'm chopping just to chop it all up rather than um, just do it clove by clove with this. Yeah, I'm just gonna go chop the rest of it. This is our bacon, so this is our home cured bacon and it is really, really delicious. We're gonna be doing bacon again in probably about two weeks. So we'll show you the process when we do that. Definitely prefer this method over the garlic press. Although I'm, I know it's really good for doing things where you really want super fine garlic, but because I love garlic so much, I don't think there's ever been a recipe in which I've got a chunk of garlic in my mouth that I've had a problem with it. <laughs> it's so good. Like cooking it all together? First, but I'm gonna take those out and then I'll fry the bacon and then I'll leave it in the pan for you and you can just take all the okay. fat and everything. Sounds and good. Yep, no, that sounds good. Okay, so into this, I'm going to throw in two packages of peppers. One celery. I'm gonna add all our herbs to that, but first I wanna show you what Dan has going on. Frying up all the bacon. So in this recipe, it does call for frying the bacon and the onion together just to have all those flavors meld. But because we're doing a big batch here, we're just gonna fry them up separately and then mix them together. These are all the bacon ends from when I sliced all of the bacon. This is our very last of our bacon. Okay, we're going to add some paprika. Parsley. Some thyme. I have to refill all my herb jars. Oregano. And a little bit of cloves. Looks like a lot more 
than it is because <laughs> it comes out really slowly. So about a quarter of a teaspoon for these huge batches. Pardon me, hun. Stir all this in and then cover it up and let this cook down and all those flavors meld. And then we'll go get the rest of our uh, ingredients for the lasagna all prepared. So we have decided to make the chicken enchiladas using some more of the ugly chicken. We're going to give this a little bit of a rinse and then we are going to cut the chicken across the grain and so that it's not long kind of stringy bits and we're not going to add this into the enchiladas until the very end. So we won't be mixing it in with the sauce. We'll just kind of add the cheese, the beans, the chicken and then pour the sauce on top because it's the stirring that really breaks the chicken apart. The recipe only calls for three slices of bacon. So. Oh good, so it's gonna be really bacony. That's great. Over there, I am just filling up my pot so that I can boil my lasagna noodles. I'm just going to cook them al dente, which means they're going to be a little bit raw on the inside so that way when we bake them up, when we take them out of the freezer, they can finish cooking then. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is open up my cans of beans because I'm gonna get those rinsed off as well. When I did this chicken enchilada recipe a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, several of you mentioned that traditionally black beans aren't used inside of the chicken enchilada. They're used as a side dish, but we really, really liked it mixed in with the chicken and the sauce. Because beans are really inexpensive, it's a nice way to bulk out your chicken enchiladas without having to use a ton of chicken. So we're gonna do that again and all the kids loved it. They thought it was delicious. For our sauce, we're going to be using canned enchilada sauce that I made up and I've mentioned this before, but I am going to make probably 10 times as much. I only did maybe around 14 pints like this and I want much, much more because it's absolutely delicious. So. We're going to use these. I might even need to make more. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna have enough. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a fun job, honey? <laughs> no? Okay, so what we're gonna do is take these pieces and cut them this way so that they're shorter pieces instead of the long ones so that they're not, hopefully, not quite cut, as stringy. Cut off the tendon bits too. Yeah, and, and any little tendons or anything like that will cut off. And we are going to use some of these. We get these from Costco. They're tortilla wraps and they have 36 in one of these big packs. We might need to grab another one actually, depending on how many we end up with. And instead of using disposable containers, we're going to be using this. And I know putting glass in a freezer is a little bit questionable, but we're of course going to leave room for expansion. We will also have them stacked so that they're nice and safe, but that way we can reuse these instead of using disposable dishes. We buy all of our pasta from the Real Canadian Superstore or Wholesale Club. They have different names, but they're the same the same grocery store chain. Big, huge, long lasagna noodles, which I will end up having to cut down because we are freezing in smaller containers. These are really deep lasagna trays, but they are a little bit smaller in size. I have a question for you. Do you guys eat garlic toast with pasta? Like when you have lasagna or anything like that, do you have garlic toast with it? because I shared that we make garlic toast with our pasta the other day and a couple of people commented saying that's so weird. Is it like a Canadian thing maybe? Eating garlic? I just this just now. <laughs> like garlic toast? I'm not sure. Everybody it, I know does it. Yeah, I know. I don't know if it's a Canadian thing or what to eat garlic toast with your pasta, but it's my favorite thing. So with big noodles like this, I just put them in the pan and then as they cook down, they kind of lower into it. Like so, don't try to break lasagna noodles like these ones because they just shatter. Cut them after they're done being cooked if you need to cut them down. That is a lot of lasagna noodles. And you can add a little bit of olive oil to your water so that your pasta doesn't stick together. Do you remember, Dan, when we had that chef over um, at Christmas time? Was, and how he said that if you add 
olive oil to your pasta when it's cooking, it actually causes the pasta sauce not to stick to it as well when you go and what? scoop it up. Do you remember that? It makes sense. Normally I don't use olive oil in my pasta water, but because I'm doing such a big batch of lasagna noodles, I don't want them to stick together. So I'm just cooling these noodles off enough so that I can handle them. We are going to move this back a little bit there. So layer of sauce first. Layer of sauce first. We just do them all at once. Why don't we do them all at once? Sure. Okay, well, why don't you clear that off and I will get all of these done. We'll start with four and then see uh, where we are at from there. Can I put this where? Are you using this over there? Um, no, I'll use it over there. That's for the enchiladas. Here. Um, that's plenty. Yeah, that's that good. Much? Nope, that's, yeah, you could go a little bit less for, I think we're gonna have like a ton of extra sauce, which is awesome. Dan hasn't had a lot of opportunity to do a lot of cooking really, because he has always worked a lot and I've always been home. So it's always, that part of our, our job, or my job description has been cook. So you, yeah, so, you haven't really had like an opportunity to, yeah, just fill in the gaps with little chunks. Do you double them up or do you just? Nope. Like, yeah, just like that. Is that fine? Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Such an amateur. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all right. I mean, if you put me doing your job, I would be completely lost. So don't worry about it. But, uh, but yeah, so he's, uh, that's just been the division of labor is he's worked outside of the house and I've worked inside of the house. So you haven't fairly really had, old school. yeah, we're fairly, we're fairly old school that way. Now it's a little bit different because Dan's working from home. So we have a lot more opportunity to, or you have a lot more opportunity to learn how to do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right about, we could do way more. You can overlap on anything that's like that. Like just sticking the extra it's probably piece. Gaps, yeah, it's better exactly for the next layer so the layers don't kind of mix together. Here, we'll bring you down closer here so you can see what we're doing. This is a really simple lasagna. My niece came here last summer and she made a white chicken lasagna that was absolutely, was oh man, that was incredible. She's a really good cook. I'm out. But we just do simple. cottage cheese now? Yep, and a layer of cottage cheese, and then I always put a little bit of salt and pepper on that, a little bit of matzo cheese sprinkled over the top, and then another layer of pasta noodles. These are starting to stick though, so I am going to give them a little splash of olive oil. And then on the inside of this, I top it with mozzarella, but on the inside, just for a little bit more flavor, this is Monterey Jack and cheddar. No, not a ton, just because there's already a lot of cheese in this as it is. A little bit of pepper, and then another layer of noodles. Yeah, I've done that before. I've used, yeah, I've used Parmesan before in it, just for added flavor, but I don't have any Parmesan at the moment. Another layer of this so just delicious, right here and- yeah, why not? Plump it right in there, yep. Mm -hmm. It's already looking really tasty. I love lasagna. Okay, and then a little bit more sauce on the top. And when you're making lasagna, do try to make your sauce nice and thick, because then you won't end up with runny lasagna. And then, oh perfect. I think that's going to work really well because it is going to. So we're going to top this with mozzarella, a ridiculous amount of mozzarella. This just brought back such a memory of my brother eating cottage cheese. When he was really? He used to love it with salt and pepper. He just like eat it. My mom is the, the same. Bucket. My mom does that too. Really? She eats it with salt and pepper. Yep. Okay, one lasagna done. So for our family, we will be using two lasagnas and then there'll be probably a couple of slices left over, but this is pretty thick lasagna so the pieces don't have to be huge. 
I should just be doing this all in a row so I don't lose track of what step I'm at. Oh, you're putting shredded cheese in the middle. Yeah. You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> you like things saucy, and I know it. Cheese, what kind were you putting on there? There's some of the cheddar Montre Jack. We definitely have enough um, noodles and sauce to do two more at least. You don't need the sauce for the enchiladas? No. I have enchilada sauce for enchiladas. I think we should go for quantity here. Okay, so we should do this two more. Sense we're at it, right? Okay, let's put these over on the table. <laughs> of, course you're adding, of course, you're adding more cheese. Do you want to pass one? You to just me? missed a couple little spots. <laughs> Dan is all about the sauce and cheese. Holy cow. Okay, now we got to go again. Really I know it is. Wow. How how is much that a 14 is that? Pound lasagna? Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen pound lasagnas. That's epic. Okay, that's a lot of food. Okay, so you guys remember my pantry tour and I was talking about how Dan is the organized one in this relationship? So this mess in here is causing him to <laughs> just, he's like, okay, we have to stop. We have to get cleaned up before we move on to the next stages. Just can't have food stuck to the bottom. <laughs> that's fantastic. You are welcome in my kitchen any day you like anytime come and clean up after me in the kitchen i love it okay i'm gonna slice up some more of these lasagna noodles so it's going to be six lasagnas in the end i'm pretty sure my kids will have an uprising if we do not have lasagna for dinner tonight too <laughs> i think so so i think we better do uh, a lasagna for dinner tonight too. So I'll do two more for the freezer and then one for dinner. Does that sound yeah. good? I think I can stretch out all this for that. Did I tell you guys that my mom is gonna come over on December 1st to do a uh, Christmas cooking day? We're gonna get a whole bunch of Christmas baking done, all of our old family recipes and she is going to do a video with me which will be so much fun my mom is the best okay this one the small one we'll do for dinner because we'll do the beans and enchiladas too and then the bigger one we'll do for the freezer dan and i were just talking about how awesome this counter that we put here is because it's so huge we were originally planning on um, cutting it down to be a little bit smaller but we've just decided that having this extra workspace in the kitchen is so fantastic we are going to pause and have a lunch break before we get on to getting our enchiladas all put together so we'll see you guys back here shortly Okay, we are back at it in the kitchen, starting to make a little bit of a headway on the copious amounts of dishes that we have over there. Now we are going to put together our chicken enchiladas. So now I am just rinsing our black beans. So these are canned black beans that we canned up probably four weeks ago now. And if my Instant Pot wasn't already filled, with the beans for the meal that we're going to make. I would have done some beans rather than using my convenience beans here. But if I run out, I'll just can up some more because it's one of the easiest things to can. Okay, so now we have our black beans, our chicken, enchilada sauce, cheddar Monterey Jack mix, Okay, so Dan is going to chop this up. It's in pretty small pieces already, but I just think it's gonna be better if we can get the really long pieces cut. It, it looks good. Relatively appetizing now. I just think in soups, because it just completely shreds apart. There's no like texture it's left more, to it. It's more like almost, almost brown chicken. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, a couple of people recommended putting it through a grinder and actually using it to make um, like chicken meatballs. Okay, 
black beans in there. Enchilada sauce. I'll just stir this really gently. Do you know what I forgot to do? Is go outside before the sun went behind the mountain. Oh. It's really, like it helps my kind of headspace during the winter time so much more if I actually get outside and get act, a walk after get this. sun. Yeah, go definitely. Out, That's a great idea. So that is not very much. I think I'm going to layer these in here. Yes, I am. Okay, that looks better. Here's what I'm thinking. I don't have enough enchilada sauce to actually cover all the casseroles with it. I have enough to use to fill on the inside, which I know isn't the traditional way to do it. The traditional way from what I understand is to make your filling, pour the enchilada sauce on top and bake it like that. But I did this last time and we really liked it. So I think what I'm gonna do is use this up to make three casseroles this size and freeze them like this. And then I will, in the next few days, make a large batch of enchilada sauce using some of my canned tomatoes can that up so that I have it so that I can just open up a jar, pour it on the top when I want to bake it in the oven. That would work, hey, to do that? Because then it doesn't defeat the purpose of already having a pre-made meal, right? Yeah. If you had some canned stuff made? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, know, okay, we'll do that. You just put fresh sauce and cheese on and Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's what we'll do then. Now we're gonna do our beans. So I've just rinsed off the pinto beans that came out of the Instant Pot. And now I'm adding in the bacon, and the onions, and this recipe will be put down in the show notes for you. Adding some tomato sauce, mustard powder, and in this recipe, you could just use a store-bought barbecue sauce too if you wanted. I just kind of think the bacon and the onions are pretty key. Little molasses. little bit of maple syrup, some brown sugar, not too much. I'll mix it all together, <clears throat> excuse me, and try it before I add too much brown sugar because we don't like ours too sweet. Apple cider vinegar is a really good ingredient to add to a little bit more to beans because it does help to cut the richness a little bit. A pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add a quart of water. I added a little bit more molasses and some maple syrup. And one of the secret ingredients to this recipe is apple juice, which I don't have. So I'm going to add a little bit of applesauce, which I've done before and is actually really good and then mix that all together and then we'll bake this in the oven at 350 for two hours or until the beans are nice and soft. Looks pretty yummy already. We're just talking about when we one day put in a new kitchen, we want to make the countertops much higher. This one's a little bit higher than that one, isn't it? Because I don't find this one as bad to work on as those. Yeah, because this one I, I find nice to work on, but Dan and I are both tall and having shorter counters like this is really hard on your back when you're cooking for a long period of time or chopping. One of the challenges with having lots of canned food is that what are you going to do with your empty jars after? So I had a lot of people asking me what I do with ours and we have a shed. So we just put them in boxes upside down like this with cardboard in between and then stack them. 
but on that video someone had an awesome tip that they had uh, heard from their grandparents and that was to fill these with water and then put them back on the shelves in the pantry because that way if you ever need water you know if there's ever an emergency or anything like that then you have water yeah well this person had said the person that left the comment said to just fill it with water and put the lid on and then stick it on the shelf and then someone responded saying that you could can it like if you have empty spaces in your canner you could can it which would disinfect the water uh, but for me I think if I was going to do that and I'm actually considering doing it uh, is I would just probably treat that water if I ever needed to use it anyway or just make sure that in six months time or whatever that it was changed out. I think it's a brilliant idea. We used over 20 jars of canned goods. Today, Dan said when he just went down to the pantry that you could definitely see the dent in the um, canning jars. We will do another tour of our pantry in six months time so that we can show you where it's at come spring. We'll do the same thing with our root cellar as well. We are going to go outside and see if we can, whoops, <laughs> catch a few rays of sunlight before it goes away completely. This is very exciting. This is building supplies. We've done, phoned around all over the place, found the best deals, got the order, picked it up, and now we have everything that we need to get all the way up to the point of drywall, mudding, and priming in the basement. So that means that we will be getting the freeze dryer room done and that hooked up and I'm so excited. Okay, hang on. <laughs> so we're at just before three o'clock right now and you can see the sun that's how much shade that we're getting from the sun going behind the mountain already so it really does get dark here super early this field here is what we call the north meadow so our house is way back over there This is Little Mountain, right here. So our property goes up to the top ridge up there. This is the new calf. Look at how big she is. Holy <laughs> shit, the size of the other one. She's huge. Hey, Poppy. <laughs> All the cows are watching Maple. You're being a good girl, Maple. Yeah. She's looking pretty round. You are beautiful. Man, these cows that Datsan threw are just gorgeous. Both of these two red calves, they're beautiful. Girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. Maple. When we came in from our walk last night, we decided to have dinner. We had one of the lasagnas and the pork and beans and they were both absolutely fantastic. The only thing that we would do differently is next time for sauce, for lasagna, we won't use celery. We just didn't really like the flavor of it. It's really good in for pasta sauce, which is kind of weird. Maybe it was just because the pieces were so big, do you think? Because they weren't just chopped up. Yeah, I think I used too much celery and I didn't chop them up when I came, they came out of the freezer. They were just kind of in big pieces and I should have chopped them up in smaller pieces, but that was the only complaint we had. The beans were absolutely delicious, but I wanted to show you what we ended up putting into the freezer. We just pulled all the tin foil off right now so that you guys could actually see, but we have the three enchiladas. And remember, I'm gonna be making some new sauce so that I can add sauce and cheese to these when we put them in the oven to bake them. And then we ended up with five lasagnas for the freezer and then the one we ate last night. And then all of the beans, which we didn't actually bring out of the freezer. 
but there were two batches of beans for the freezer too, which is just fantastic. I'm really happy with this. Making freezer meals is something Dan and I were talking about last night that we might want to start adding into something that we do every couple of weeks because this, just looking at this, decreases my stress actually quite a bit, just knowing that I can pull one of these out at any time and have a nice warm home cooked meal for my kids. I hope that you enjoyed today's video everyone and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!